Hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, my name is Matthew McLaughlin. Uh, I'm the artist with the work in your gallery space right now. Um, so I'm just going to give you a bit of an intro to who I am and my background. Um, and then I'm actually going to pull up a slideshow uh, to kind of be able to specifically look at the works that are in the show and talk about them a little bit more. Um, so I'm from the DC region. I grew up just outside of Washington, DC. Um, but I went to my undergrad at Ringling College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida, and then my grad at Arizona State, specifically in printmaking uh, for my MFA. I moved back to the DC region after that, uh, and I've been teaching at the University of Maryland and some other local community colleges uh, since then. Um, so my work, as you can see, involves a lot of mapping style imagery, as well as uh, ideas of place and space and our relationship with it, but in more abstract qualities, uh, because I actually grew up in a town that was very specifically designed in that kind of sense. It, that kind of sense, um, the town that I grew up in was actually part of the New Deal projects that uh, FDR ran uh, in the 1930s, um, and so there's actually a very specific design quality to it that, until I got into college and really started thinking about what my work was, um, really didn't actually stick out that much. Um, but since I was an undergrad 20 years ago, um, I have slowly played with mapping imagery here and there, and it was just in the past five or 10 years um, that I really started hammering into it to kind of explore and try some stuff out. Um, but it really does speak to kind of how, where you're from, what you know, your own experiences really do build into who you are as a person. Because um, I've always had a pretty innate sense of direction. Um, I have a very hard time getting lost. And I've found that like has really reinforced part of that understanding of trying to understand our understanding of proprioception, which is our sense of our self inside of space, as well as proximity, which is our self in relationship to other things. Um, and so that kind of stuff, along with other mapping imagery, has always been pretty strongly informing my work. Um, so let's do this. All right. So um, generally speaking, this, uh, the work in the gallery space comes from two different bodies of work that I've been playing with uh, for the past seven years now. Um, overall, I like to kind of call the work that I do things along the lines of spatial relations and other things because they're kind of playing with these ideas of our understanding of space um, and how we translate it into different types of imagery to get a better understanding overall. Um, so the two main bodies of work in the exhibition are the proxemic boundaries work uh, and the plotting truths work. Um, the work on the wall that you're sitting next to is work from the plotting truths series. Uh, whereas the work that I'm guessing is around the corner uh, is the Proxemic Boundary Series. Um, the Proxemic Boundary Series, I started in 2017, um, playing around with different processes and trying to get an understanding of uh, the kind of division of space that we see in a lot of neighborhoods and spaces when you think about the fencing that people put up, whether it be um, just chain link fence or whether it be full privacy fences or things like that. Um, I had been working on a series for a few years before that where I was drawing, making very uh, hyper-realistic drawings of the kind of detritus that people would put outside of those fences for the garbage and waste pickup, uh, lots of leaf bags and other things. Um, and I started getting interested in the actual division of that space, that sensation of the private versus the public space and what that kind of means when we start to put up those barriers. Um, part of that was also influenced because when I was in grad school, uh, living in Arizona, uh, my wife was working with a nonprofit in Juarez, Mexico, which is across the border from El Paso. And I would regularly drive her to El Paso so that she could cross the border to go do work for a day. And then I would pick her up at the end of the day and bring her back to the Phoenix area. Um, and there is a, I mean, when you live in that area, the border area, there's a very strong sense of the division between the US and Mexico in very specific parts. Um, there are areas where the border is natural, but there are areas like El Paso where there are these 20 foot iron fences dividing and breaking up the space. Um, and so the proxemic boundaries kind of came from this idea of that division of space and that idea. Um, and the name comes from the idea of proxemics, which is the study of uh, human use of space and the effects on population density. 
Uh, more specifically, it has a certain number of layers. So if you think about that idea of like your personal bubble, that is a layer of proxemics. The personal bubble is a layer. It's about three feet. And then there's a six foot bubble, which is more for the uh, personal but relationship uh, situation where people you relate to and you feel comfortable with, you allow inside of that one. Um, and then there's a 20 foot one, which is getting more into the personal private territory. And then the full public is beyond that. Um, and so this series kind of built out of explorations and ideas related to that. I started drawing fences in different ways and then started trying to simplify them down into just making them feel like these abstract forms that just interrupt the idea of the landscape. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to make the landscape too specific. I wanted it relatable to a larger viewing population um, than just somebody who might have grown up with a chain link fence versus a privacy fence or other things. Um, and so I just made them these large abstract forms that sat on top of these blends of color. Um, now, these are what are known as rainbow rolls. If you've ever taken a printmaking class, you might be taught how to make a rainbow roll. Um, and that's what these are. A lot of people think they're paintings, but this is actually ink on paper um, by putting the ink onto a plate and then printing and transferring it. Um, from there, I used newsprint to kind of cut out and shape the form, make sure I liked what it was going to do with it. Um, and then once I had that, I would then go through with graphite and draw out these forms, giving them a sense of being specifically a wall, but not really defining the, their space or place as part of it, making them a bit more abstract and ambiguous in that. Um, and so you can see, like, as I kind of went through, this one actually has quite a large separation, and that is just the white of the panel. It's just the gesso that was put on the panel. So I actually like physically cut. So they were actually like breaking the idea of the landscape, separating it completely, not just visually breaking it, but also physically breaking it and taking up that space. Um, and whenever I did these, I was trying to play around with color blends that would be evocative for different ideas of landscape and space um, without, again, specifically trying to be too specific with it. Um, this was actually probably one of my favorite blends that I created during that series. Um, it was one that I sent a photo to a friend of mine and they said that will never work as a nice rainbow. And then I actually did it and they were pretty blown away. Um, but whenever I would go through, I'd print a number of these because I never knew which ones were going to work or which ones didn't. So you can see that the blend here is the same as the blend here. And the blend here is very similar to the blend here. Um, but then once I had the blends, it was all about trimming them down to a size I felt like made sense. And then from there, finding the form that I felt like kind of interrupted um, and broke it up quite a bit. And so, again, we're kind of playing in abstraction and playing in realism at the same time. I'm giving you projected ideas of cast shadows without specifically uh, trying to give you too much detail in the overall work. Uh, and you can see they're all kind of playing in different ways. Some of them are very tall, like this one's only six inches wide, but it's 18 inches tall. So it really projects a sense of like being in front of it. Um, and what I've really liked about doing this series, and I continue to kind of do in small ways, is uh, the fact that this series really has a sense of scale on a digital level, but then you all can see the physical ones, they're not actually that big. So they actually also have that kind of funny illusionary quality because I know a lot of people who have seen these online and they're like, these must be massive. They must be like so big and like they feel like they're overwhelmed by them. And then you get up to them and they're very small, but it's when you really approach them that again, they start to encompass that space because uh, they're playing with that idea of your periphery vision. You get close enough to these, you start to see the sides in your periphery and then you are kind of surrounded by them. Um, without them being too big on their own. Uh, so it's been an interesting one. I'm still working on these. I'm still playing around with them. Um, but the process has slowed down a little bit because the other series uh, that's there that you all are sitting near is The Plotting Truths. And this one has taken on a real strong life of its own. Um, and I'm still working with it pretty readily. Um, so this came about because um, as an artist and specifically a printmaker in background, you're always trying to figure out how to use your, all your materials without having too much waste as part of it. Uh, and so I was doing this other series uh, called Reflective Cartography, which were all these very small pieces, eight inches by eight inches, 10 inches by 10. And I had a lot of cutoff scraps. Um, and so this was during the middle of the pandemic that I was in my studio, really having a hard time thinking about going forward with any bodies of work or anything. 
Um, and then I got this idea to kind of start rearranging these pieces and playing with these pieces as a whole. Um, and eventually what I got was this piece, the old man's proposition, um, which reminded me a lot about kind of the shapes of constellations and how we take these few key points in the sky, but then can project this large scale image on top of it. Um, at the same time, when you look at the constellation imagery, they're very well drawn out forms. Um, but then these weren't well drawn out. They were kind of rough, they were kind of loose. Um, but at the same time, they had some qualities that made them feel like they were looking at something. And what I realized was they reminded me a lot of political districting maps, specifically the idea of what's known as gerrymandering, uh, which as you can see is the practice of dividing or arranging a territorial unit into election districts. Um, now, the interesting thing is where the term gerrymandering actually came from. The history of gerrymandering actually goes back to the 18th century, uh, in which the governor of uh, Massachusetts, whose last name was Jerry, uh, was seen as having uh, created congressional districts that were problematic. Specifically, one of them, if drawn in the right way, looked like it was a salamander or dragon-like thing. And so... Uh, there was an editorial published in one of the Boston newspapers at the time that referred to it as gerrymandering because they were taking the word salamander and the governor's last name and combining them together to make the term gerrymander. Um, and so that's what kind of built into the history of it and what we kind of think of today. Now, the interesting thing is some of the worst uh, examples of gerrymandering in modern history have actually been some of the most equitable like uh, voting situations when it comes to representation for it. There's this weird idea that we have to have districts for elections that are very clean and crisp and look even on an area basis. The amount of square miles that they cover is even and right. Um, but a lot of times that doesn't actually follow the population status. And so there are some really ridiculous ones that actually make the overall representation a little bit better. and But because they look ridiculous, they get taken out and they get debated and kind of beaten down. Um, and so when I started building these, um, when I saw the overall shape and how it kind of reminded me of the ridiculous, like the kind of ridiculous looking election districts that come about, um, I decided that I would start drawing on top of them. So. I build the collage base with all these other pieces, and then I go in and once it's solidified as a collage, I use uh, colored pencil, paint markers, and uh, India ink uh, pens to go in and actually draw the line work. So from a distance, they just look like these large abstract shapes uh, in different combinations. But then once you actually get up to them, you can start to see the amount of detail work that's built into them that then kind of reference this other secondary level of conversation. Um, and it's kind of playing off this dichotomy of the ridiculous quality of the story of the gerrymandering side of these shapes. But the same idea when we think about constellations and the history behind our stories of constellations, um, it actually makes more, a lot more sense for these kind of shapes and forms to come out of it. Um, and so this series has about 20 so far. Um, I've been working on it for about three years. I'm, my long-term goal is to actually get to about 88 of these because in the uh, actual sky, there is a specific map of 88 constellations that have been agreed upon on a global scale through different uh, astrological societies and astronomy groups and such. Um, and so my goal is to get to about 88 of these series overall um, to be able to more specifically play with this idea. Now, they they're definitely not fitting together like the constellations in the sky do and the different territorial aspects of that. Um, but that is kind of the goal in the long term is to try to make that many of these. Um, so overall, like my work really builds into these ideas and plays in with the idea of our understanding of space, the division of space, um, and our understanding of the environment and our place in it in a relationship scale in a lot of different ways. Um, I've started making a series that looks at it more from an aerial view as well, kind of playing around with that. Um, and that's kind of something that's always been there for me, that understanding of mapping and our understanding of our place in space through both the idea of proxemics, but also proprioception 
and the physical relationship we have with the world around us. Um, and it's always interesting. I mean, the biggest thing I think I've figured out in the past few years when it comes to making is just that idea of what's the relationship between things? How does it make sense for it? And keeping my eye really open to what's there. Um, it's a lot more about trying to see what's there than really specifically see into the details of things. Um, because the details can come later, but if you keep your eyes open generally, you can start to find some really interesting things working in different ways. So, yeah. Any questions about the show or anything? Okay. Um, okay, which part can we get? So, in simplifying it down, Matt, could you sort of just simplify it for students, but the two different, you're talking about boundaries and the, um, the one set of using the walls between America and Mexico as an example. Do you get that part of it? That was the point of that point. And these are just the same and different, like a, a different way of setting it. Simplified. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the work is exploring and trying to understand and present to the viewer different ways of seeing and understanding your own relationship with the space around you. I mean, it's paying attention to the small details, but also paying attention to the bigger details, like thinking about how far it is in between your home and where you go to work and where you like go to learn, but also thinking about all the stuff in between those, not just the destination from one place to another, but what's all the little things that happen in between them? And that's kind of where it starts for me. And then from there, it's also zooming out on that scale and trying to get a better understanding of societal relationships and how we relate to larger aspects of where we live and what we're a part of and who we are. Because, I mean, even me, I've grown up in the Washington, D.C. region. I went to school in Florida. I went to school in Arizona. But I actually have a pretty strong connection to the Philadelphia area because my dad grew up in Lansdowne. And so, but so it's like, even though I'm mostly here on a metaphorical level, I also have a connection up in your area because of the relationship between where my dad came from and where he grew up. And so it's just trying to make people think about those relationships and our understanding of that kind of stuff when it comes to your own relationship, but not only the physical space within three feet of you, but the larger sense of where you are in the world and how you fit into it. So, I think you also enjoy the beauty of the compositions also. Anybody else questions? Comments? What about the white line? So, some of the students are trying to get beautiful edges. So, how did you get your edges on your your, um... On the proxemic boundary series, <laughs> yeah, I I cut it. <laughs> it's a ruler and blades. If you physically go up to those pieces and really look at it, you'll see a very small separation of the physical space in those, because it's literally cutting along the paper on those borders, and then applying it to the panel so that there's the paper just sits ever so slightly off, but it creates a physical break. And it really forces you to kind of understand how this is interrupting and breaking that area and that space for it. So it's the whole concept of battles and that breaking it. It's very cool. It's very interesting. Much more um, abstract than when you first look at it, of what you're trying to say. Anybody else? No. No more questions? We have them here. Oh, yeah. So on the other one, I'd like to talk to you later about what we can go over and look at the questions. We we'll hit that. Okay, so thank you very much. That was You're great. You're welcome. Good I think that we didn't everybody agree that we didn't take on the value that he was trying to say on first book. Well, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And this is great about the journal landing, uh, the political books. Okay, thank you very much.
No problem. Thanks, y'all. I'll send it to you first and then I'll post it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, bye. bye. <laughs>